obedience to God's law. Remember, he's the second Adam, the final Adam, the last Adam. Our first father, Adam, he was supposed to live perfectly under God's law. He failed. But the second Adam comes, he lives a perfect life without sin. But that wasn't enough because we in Adam are all sinners. First of all, his sin is imputed to us, but also we personally sin. For both those reasons, we're under condemnation. But what Christ did by going to the cross, our sins were put to his account and his righteousness is put to our account. The great requirement is that we look to Christ totally by grace through faith, repenting of our sins. And again, don't think that faith and repentance is some kind of work that we'd even do within ourselves. It was not only given to you graciously by God to believe, but also to suffer for his namesake, Paul says to the church at Philippi. What we have here, John, it was graciously given to us to believe. You know, in Acts, it'll talk about God opening the hearts of people to believe. See, we're saved by grace alone. Even our faith is not a work. It's the Holy Spirit who convinces us of the truth of the gospel. It is his work. Even repentance, God grants people repentance in the New Testament. Not that by my repentance, I'm saved. No, my repentance is filthy rags. My faith, uh-uh, no way. What the Bible teaches is we're saved solely by the grace of God. And that's why we can... <laughs> That's why we can be so uh, joyful this morning. We may have lost in Nashville, but the gospel hasn't changed. But you got to be careful what's being taught out of the Southern Baptist Convention now. The great requirement is for us to look to Christ in faith. But again, is again what Paul says in Thessalonians. He tells us the word of God did not come to you in word only. It wasn't just a sermon. When that sermon was preached, it wasn't word only, but also in the spirit and in power and full assurance. In other words, when, when the gospel is preached, the power of the Holy Spirit has to convince us of the truth of the gospel. When Paul talks to the church at Corinth, he says, when I came to you, I didn't come to you with the wisdom of men, but I preached to you in, sp in the sp spirit of God and in power that your faith may not rest in man, but in the power of God. That's where our faith comes from, the power of God, not in ourselves. There was nothing that I saw that I said, oh, that's me. And God looked at me and goes, well, look at that. Russell, he picked me. He had the great faith. I'm, you know, he's the guy, okay? No, I was a hellbound sinner. And without the Holy Spirit convincing me, I would still be a hellbound sinner. It's the 